Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn about events and actions, which is essentially where the magic happens in Game Maker, where we program our objects for what they can and cannot do. So for starters, I'm going to double click on my object main. And that brings up this screen, where as you can see, there's a column for events and a column for actions. Okay, there has to be an event to trigger an action. So the event could be something like the create event, meaning when the main object is created, we might tell it to do something. These are all the actions. And in fact, the actions have, there are multiple tabs that we'll get into in good time to show you what you can do with the different actions. But uh, back to the events, we have the create event, we have a destroy event. That would mean if this main character were destroyed, what should happen? An alarm allows us to use loops where we basically say, let's set an alarm for a certain amount of time. When that alarm goes off, something should happen. And if we want it to be a loop, we might reset the alarm, and then it continues to do this over and over. Step events involve um, events where basically the game maker is continually doing whatever this step event is uh, each step. And a step is a unit of time in game maker. There are typically 30 steps per second. So in this case, it would be like every step, it's going to check something or do something. And that'll become much more clear in good time. Collision events, you know, if, if I if object collides with the wall, what should happen? If my object collides with the ghost, what should happen? Etc. Okay, then we have keyboard commands, which there are a lot of different options uh, here for what key, pretty much any key that you want to use, where when that key is pressed, when you're pressing it down, something will happen. Um, and let's see, or actually, I'm sorry, with keyboard, once you press it, it just happens unless you tell it otherwise. But while it's pressed, it's doing something. Okay. Um, in other words, if you pressed and let, if you were going left and you pressed and let go, keyboard would keep going left. But if you did indicate, which we'll do shortly, that when we are not pressing it down, like when our finger released or when there is no key being pressed, that it should do something. That's how that would work. Key press, on the other hand, has you have to keep pressing it to do the action you want. So if you want to move right and you use key press, you're going to have to keep tapping on the right key to move. Uh, this often works better for shooting in a game because you might want to have it that you have to keep pressing to shoot. Okay, the mouse deals with different things we can do with the mouse. Uh, if we want to program what should happen if the left button, you know, is on the player, etc. There's a whole number of other at the room start, at the game start, if we go outside the room, etc. And then draw events uh, come in handy when it comes to things like drawing your score instead of uh, as a little caption, but as a graphic or your lives left, things like that. And then key press and key release. This would be I tap it, something happens. Release is specifically if I let go, something happens. Okay. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the keyboard. So we're going to do uh, keyboard left. And when I have my guy and I press left, we want him to move to the left. And let's say at a speed of four. Now, this is also a way to move. Let me just show you the difference real quick. With this one, the big difference is we choose a direction. So if I wanted him to go left, I would use the direction 180 and then four. This gives us some flexibility for other things, but uh, for simplicity for now, we'll go with this approach. So left at a speed of four. Okay. Now I can go back and choose right and do the same thing. Somewhat of a shortcut is to right click and duplicate an event. And if I do that, I can, um, so I duplicate the event and I made it go, I'm oh, sorry, that one I already had. Duplicate event, and I do, instead of for right, I'm going to go up. So it really duplicates it, but now I have to change this anyway, but I don't have to type the speed in again. And then same thing, duplicate, 
keyboard down and once again change this now let me show you what happens at this point and then we'll make one minor adjustment well a few minor adjustments actually so I go to play my game and I move and now I, I let go of the key and I'm still moving I go left I let go of the key it's still moving I go up uh oh I'm going through the walls so we have a few things to fix here one of my favorite ways to resolve the keep moving issue is to go to keyboard and say when there is no key being pressed. Now sometimes this could come to be a problem uh, if you could be pressing more than one key at a time or something, but in this case it would work fine. I'm going to choose no key and then I want to have my guy stop and the speed doesn't really matter. Okay, And now when I play my game I move and let go and he stops. I move Okay, he still goes through walls, so that's our next order of business. So now we need to, first of all, with the wall, we're going to make sure the wall is a solid object. Okay, and now for our guy, we're going to say very simply when he collides with the wall, he should also stop. Okay, so now let's see what we've got. Wow, excellent. He's not going through walls. He's maneuvering pretty well. Oh, there we go. Good stuff. Okay, so that'll conclude this video. In the next one, we'll talk a little more about the, uh, the enemy and how to program that to do things automatically. Okay?